The Royal Navy's Air Force. More than 150 combat aircraft able to operate in any environment, day or night, from land or sea. A multi-role force of fast jets and helicopters. Always ready to support the Royal Navy wherever it's needed, this is the Fleet Air Arm. The all-weather single-seat Sea Harrier FA-2 is the Fleet Air Arm's most potent aircraft. Its short takeoff and vertical landing capability is essential for its main task of defending the Navy's Portsmouth-based aircraft carriers. Highly maneuverable, high subsonic speed and an advanced radar system make the FA-2 Europe's most versatile fighter attack aircraft. Basically, these aircraft are very big hoovers, uh, and in particular, the Harrier will pick up an awful lot of foreign object damage, uh, and one tiny little chip on the front of a blade can write off the entire engine and cause a huge amount of work. Uh, and that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is it doesn't get picked up, or it happens as the pilot's taxing out for a sortie, and then during that sortie, the engine will fail. Then that's the end of both of an aircraft and of the pilot. I first wanted to join the Navy from about the age of 10 or 11. My older brother was uh, in the Navy uh, as a mechanic and he used to come back with stories of the aircraft carriers and, and uh, being around the other side of the world. I also had a fascination with flying at the time. I loved going to air shows, used to live fairly close to Piggin Hill uh, and would go there every year uh, and watch them and think that would be a good job. Thing that the Harrier can do is uh, hover. It does give us a massive, uh, massive advantage in being able to nose point uh, at a potential bandit uh, and bring our uh, weapons to bear. The Sea Harrier FA2, it's a single seat, uh, multi role airplane uh, optimized for fleet defense uh, to basically go out and stop other aircraft from attacking uh, our ships at sea. Uh, it's uh, got a variety of armament and uh, the weapon system is uh, second to none in the UK at the moment. In terms of the radar mated with the uh, AMRAAM Beyond Visual Range missile, gives us an enormous capability to go and shoot people before we can actually see them. Sea Harrier is an incredibly successful aircraft. It uh, first cut its teeth in the Falklands, uh, where it had an excellent kill ratio against the Argentinian forces and uh, certainly made the press in those days. But it's really come on since then, upgraded to what we call the FA-2, where it's put a new radar in it and it has this much more capable air-to-air -air missile than it did in those days. The Sea Harrier has been one of the most successful aircraft the fleet air arm has ever deployed. The fact that it's been in service for 25 years tells you something. It's got the best radar system in any fighter in Western Europe until the Eurofighter Typhoon comes into service. Um, it's demonstrated a swing role in the Falklands conflict. It shot down um, 25 enemy aircraft, or more than 25 enemy aircraft, for no losses in air combat. No fighter in history has ever achieved a ratio like that. The Royal Navy uh, received its first aircraft in 1912, and that was the year that the first aircraft took off from a moving ship. But the, uh, the Royal Navy Air Service itself was formed uh, in January of 1914, uh, and then was amalgamated into the newly born uh, Royal Air Force along with the Royal Flying Corps towards the end of the First World War. So in 1924, and this is where the, the phrase was first coined, the fleet air arm of the Royal Air Force was formed. Uh, but as air power became more and more important, especially in the maritime environment, uh, it was recognised that really the Navy had to have their own arm. And so in 1938, the fleet air arm was transferred from the Royal Air Force to the Royal Navy. The fleet air arm really grew to quite uh, huge proportions. Some 17,000 aircraft saw service in the fleet air arm through 80 different carriers. 
At the end of the war, the Navy, the Navy weighed in at about 800,000 people, of which 150,000 were Fleet Air Arm personnel. The Fleet Air Arm today um, runs in at about 6,000 people. Uh, we have well over 160 aircraft. Though that doesn't sound very many, it is about the same proportion as it was at the end of the, uh, the Second World War of the Royal Navy in total. And by far the most powerful of these aircraft are the F-A-2 Sea Harriers of 801 Squadron. It's also the most challenging to fly. Only one in a hundred applicants ever make the grade. Uh, flying the Sea Harrier is a very exciting occupation. You get a real adrenaline rush. Obviously you get a huge sensation of speed, it flies very fast, and a great uh, sensation when, uh, of acceleration when you're turning as well. But the Sea Harrier is still quite a handful to fly. It has an extra lever uh, which moves the nozzles, which causes some complexity when in takeoff and landing. And uh, you really do need to have high quality pilots uh, who are well trained to be able to both fight and operate the aircraft around airfields and aircraft carriers. Even for experienced Sea Harrier pilots, landing on the deck of an aircraft carrier in rough weather is no mean feat. It's a skill they have to practice in the simulator before every exercise. Everybody, including the junior guys and the senior guys, before we go onto the ship for an embarked period, we will all come through the sim for at least an hour uh, and we'll run through the systems, the start-up procedures, which is quite different from the way we do it when we're not on board a ship. This multi-million pound simulator is an exact replica of a Sea Harrier cockpit. It feels and handles exactly like the real thing. As you can see ahead of him, he's got about 400 feet of which to get airborne. He's got a light fuel load, so that's not going to be a problem. All he has to do is go to full power, release his brakes, and he'll go straight down the flight deck. As he gets to the end, you can see the deck rising. Now that's the ski jump. That will give him an upward momentum off the end. As he goes off the end, he will select a certain number of degrees of nozzle and this will assist him to climb away and then he'll gradually bring the nozzles facing fully aft and the aircraft will be completely wing on flight by a mile ahead of the ship. Right, the present sortie, the first thing we'll do is put him onto an incoming target which will be a Russian MiG-25. We'll engage that, shoot it down, at which stage it'll have no weapons left and we'll recall him back to the ship. The Sea Harrier is uh, designated FA, which uh, means that uh, it's both a fighter and an attack aircraft. One, These pilots know that uh, they're flying a highly capable aeroplane and they have an immense desire to be the best. And uh, quite frankly, we have some of the best fighter pilots in the world at the moment and they know how to use their, this aeroplane and uh, so much so that uh, the Sea Harrier is probably still one of the best air defence platforms in the world. I would class it as certainly the best air defence fighter in Europe at the moment and uh, by far the best air defence fighter that we have in the UK today. Roger. When he uh, pops out of the bottom of the cloud, uh, really Flyco is going to be uh, just making sure that he's on the, on the Roger, as we call it, uh, and he's going to be in good order to come alongside the ship. Uh, into steady hobbit. What we're going to see in this uh, screen up here is uh, exactly what he's seeing at the front of his uh, aircraft as he uh, breaks out of cloud uh, and sees the ship at about 500 feet or so. The perfect landing, of course, but if any mistakes are made in the simulator, at least the pilot can walk away from it. If engine failure occurs during flight, the pilot's options for survival are very limited. We're in the situation as a single engine aircraft that should we get an engine failure, we're not well placed to come back home on another engine. Uh, so we actually need a good means of escape. And uh, I'm sitting on a Martin Baker ejection seat here, which uh, is really automatic. It, uh, if we pull a handle, uh, we'll be swinging in a parachute literally within a matter of few seconds. <laughs> 